So welcome back everybody. About a month or a month and a half ago I posted this year's honey harvest video and during that video I asked if y'all might be interested in seeing the process of rendering beeswax this year and a lot of y'all said that you were interested in seeing that. So today is the day we're going to take all the beeswax that we've got and we're going to render it down into something usable. Now rendering beeswax is really just a fancy term for taking beeswax, the uh, cappings that you get off of the frames or the burr comb that you find in your hives during hive inspections taking that wax, boiling it down, straining it, filtering it, and getting all the junk out of it and turning it into something that's usable and marketable. So let's get started. I'll show you all step by step how it's done and hopefully we'll get a good bit of wax this year. So as I said, there's a few things that you're going to need. First off, if you haven't done this in a while like I have, it's been several years since I've done this, you're going to need some instructions. So make sure you've got some good instructions handy and I will try to find the link to the instructions that I have here. It's a pretty good set. It works well. Uh, you're going to need your wax, of course. We're going to take this wax, and I've got another bucket as well, but we're going to take this mess, and we're going to render it down into this right here. This is the good stuff that is the finished product of rendering wax, and this is a heck of a lot more usable than that bucket I just showed you. But you're going to need your wax, you're going to need some instructions, you're going to need some newspaper, just any newspaper will pretty well do. You're going to need a screen to filter out your wax with. Now I'm going to use my uh, honey strainer and I just hope it recovers from this. You're going to need some pots. I have two of these because I have a good bit to do. You're going to need a very large pot, such as this one, to uh, boil your wax in. And you're also going to need some pantyhose. Now I went ahead and I got two sets of pantyhose and <laughs> I know this seems kind of ridiculous but this stuff is very very fine and what it does is helps to filter out the very fine particulates from the, from the, uh, from the beeswax. Now I mentioned earlier burr comb, uh, the bucket that I just showed you, this stuff right here. Uh, this is the stuff, the wax cappings that you get off of the frames as you're harvesting the honey. This is what you call burr comb right here. And this is the comb that the bees make on the insides of the hives wherever they've got some extra space. Sometimes they'll put it between the top bars of the top of the frames and the top of the hive. Or they'll put it between the bottoms of the frames and the top of the frames and the box down below. But it's just wax that they fill in spaces with and this is not in such great shape. It's usable. Um, but it does have, it looks like a wax moth or something has been in it. But it is usable and uh, we're, certainly gonna, we're certainly going to go ahead and render that down. But you actually get the most and the cleanest wax out of, uh, out of burr comb like this. Because in the, in the frames you've got a lot of trash, you've got a lot of cocoons, and you've got a lot of junk that you have to get out. But the burr comb is always very clean. Um, so that's it. Let's go ahead and get started and see what we can do. So a word to the wise before we start doing this, don't go into your wife's kitchen and just start grabbing pots and stuff to do this with. You need to buy your own dedicated stuff for this because this wax, once you use a pot uh, for this, the wax does not come off of the inside of these pots. Also, it would be very wise of you to do this outside uh, in your shop or if you do not have a shop, do it in the yard. Just figure out some way to do it that's not in the house because wax is extremely difficult to get off of things and uh, it's going to make your life a lot simpler if you use your own stuff, your own dedicated stuff and just, just avoid doing it inside of the house. Just as an example, is a pretty funny story. I used to be very active on the beesource.com beekeeping forums and uh, somebody posted one day just in an absolute panic they had brought one of their hive bodies inside of the house and stuck it down on the carpet. Now and they had actually gotten the propolis. It wasn't wax, it was propolis on the carpet and they could not get it off. When they stuck that box down it stuck to the carpet and he was having a time getting it off and he was just begging somebody for some advice before his wife got home. So Propolis is bad, but beeswax is also pretty bad as well. So just get your own stuff and uh, you'll save yourself some heartache. I like to use this propane fish cooker for this. It puts out a lot of heat and it's portable so you can put it pretty well, wherever you want, pretty well wherever you want it. I've got this very large stainless steel pot. Your best bet as per my instructions that I have is to use stainless steel because that way stuff doesn't leach out of, the, uh, of your pot into your wax. Time. 
So now that we've got our cappings in our pot, we need to fill this up with water. Now what we need to do is take note of where these cappings are uh, in this pot, and then we need to fill it, fill it up with water up to that level. And then we need to add about half as much more. So for example, if you have to add a gallon of water, you add the gallon, then you add another half of a gallon to get it up to the point where you want it. All right, so that's got it covered, and now we need to add about half that much more. And that should do it right there. So you want to turn it up on high initially just to get the boil going and also I am going to stir this just a little bit just so there's not wax that's stuck to the bottom down there. I just don't want it to just don't want it to get way too hot on the bottom because this is a lot of heat that we're dealing with. I really don't want the wax to be stuck in one spot. I think I'm going to add a little more water also. But you really want to get the heat up initially so that it starts boiling. And then once it starts boiling, I mean, you really want this to boil hardcore. Um, once it starts boiling, you'll leave it boiling for about 30 minutes. Just make sure it doesn't boil over. Turn your heat down if necessary. I'm going to add a little more water. That should be okay. If you add too much water, it's really not a big deal because that wax is going to separate out from that water. Uh, the difference is it just may be a little less convenient when you're pouring it up because you may not have enough volume in your containers later But it's not going to hurt anything if you have too much water You just don't want to have not enough water I'm going to go ahead and add the burr comb and the extra stuff that I've got in a jar over here as well So I've got a little wax from a few years ago that I never really cleaned out properly I'm going to go ahead and throw that in and we'll re-render that get something useful out of it. Here's my burr comb from years past. I don't do a very good job as a beekeeper of saving my burr comb, which is really a waste because it's very, very valuable stuff. Here's a little more wax. This is just really dirty. I don't guess I ever finished rendering this last time. We'll throw this in here as well. Alright, so now we just need to let it boil. Give it a good stir and then we'll check our temperature. About 125 degrees right now. We're getting there, we're getting there slow. And this turns into the nastiest mess you have ever seen and you will not believe how in the world, you won't understand how in the world we can get such beautiful wax out of this. We are getting close guys. Alright, so we got it boiling. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. Turn it down quite a bit just so it doesn't boil over. If it boils over, it's, it's going to be a real mess. So guys, we want this mess to boil for 30 minutes, so let's go ahead and start our timer. So guys, if you can see, I've got the heat turned pretty low. It was trying to boil over. You really want this to boil pretty, um, uh, pretty vigorously, but I've got the pot pretty full, so it can't without boiling over. You might do better off putting a little bit less in the pot, but for now, we're just going to make sure this stays, stays steadily boiling for 30 minutes at a low heat.
I'm going to go ahead and spread this newspaper out. What we're going to do is when we strain this wax through our screen, we're going to take the junk that's left in the screen and we're going to dump it out on here and we're going to make fire starters out of it. Alright, so we're actually past the 30 minute mark now. What we're going to do, I'm going to give this one more little stir, which is really probably not necessary, but it makes me feel better. Then we're going to turn the heat off and then we're going to pour this up. So I don't think I mentioned earlier, but if you don't have one of these screens right here, this is actually a screen that you use to filter honey or to screen honey. I'm going to use it, and like I said, I hope it recovers. But if you don't have one of these, you can use several layers of cheesecloth also, and that'll get the job done. So this is what we're left with. This is the coarsely filtered results of what we just did. What we're going to do is let this sit overnight. And what this is, this is water and beeswax and a lot of fine particulates. What will happen is the wax will float to the top and solidify. And we'll be able to break that off of the top. And then we'll filter it again to get all the fine stuff out. Unfortunately, there's some bees that have taken a dive into here. There's a dearth right now, so they're pretty well coming from the hives to try to find some honey or wax or whatever they can get. So we'll let this sit overnight and come back to it tomorrow and see what we've got. Alright guys, so this is the next day. We're going to clear our table off here. I probably should have used uh, probably should have used more newspaper here. This is bled through and is sticking pretty bad. So word to the wise, use more newspaper when you do this. But anyhow, we're going to clear this table off and then we're going to get our wax out of our, uh, out of our pots and see what we've got. So guys, here's what we're left with. This is the pot that had the most wax in it. The other pot has some wax in it too. It's not quite as much, but we'll dig it out as well. Really excited about this because this is some really pretty yellow beeswax and I'm really excited to see what it looks like once we filter it through the pantyhose as well. But let's see if we can get this out of here and, uh, and see what we've got. It's stuck to the sides. Let me see if I can get some heat onto the sides and uh, get it un unstuck there. There we go, there's our first wax cake. And um, I'll have to say that is a nice one. That is a, that is a thick chunk of wax right there. Let's get you, uh, let me get you all a closer look here. 
So here's what we've got guys. This is our roughly processed or uh, whatever you want to call it, our screened wax cake. It's got the big chunks out, which includes all the cocoons, uh, bee parts, bees, stuff like that. There are a few bees left in here, but these are the ones that actually flew in uh, after, we, after we boiled that stuff down. You see the bottom? You've got a bunch of junk on the bottom here. We'll filter that out as well. Um, that's the, that was the main cake right there. This is the other pot. And the only reason I used two pots is because I didn't have enough uh, I didn't have one pot that was big enough for all of that liquid, but here's our other one. You can see it's very thin, but uh, it's wax, and we're gonna get, we're gonna get something out of it too. So let's get started on the second step here. So we're ready to melt our wax. Now this is the part we really need to be careful about because you can melt this wax directly on the heat, but it's much safer if you use some kind of a double boiler because we know wax is quite flammable and if you get it up to a certain point it's going to spontaneously combust on you and putting out an oil fire or a wax fire is not an easy task. So what you want to do and make sure your stuff is clean for this. I'm making sure the bottom part of my double boiler is super clean for this because this is the boiler I'm going to strain my wax into after we get it melted. The top, bo top boiler doesn't really, it's not quite as important what we're going to do, we're just going to put our bottom boiler down here and put a little water in it. And that should get the job done. Make sure this is clean. Then we'll just stick that one on top like that and just kind of make a makeshift double boiler. So let's get this thing lit. So while our wax is melting, we're going we're to go ahead and prepare the final mold for our filtered wax cake. Now this is just a pie pan or a cake layer pan or something. And uh, the instructions that I have say to use a uh, like a half gallon milk carton that's waxed on the inside. I'm going to use this and what I'll do is once this is dry, I can just break it into pieces and I'll store it in Ziploc bags because the weight of this wax is not important to me because I don't sell the wax. I think we're going to try to make some candles this year. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread out parts paper inside of this just to make it non-stick and uh, that should that should um, that should do what we want so here's what I did to make this parchment paper take the shape or maintain the shape of this container. I just took some tie wraps, some zip strips, whatever you want to call them, tied them around the edges. I shoved this lid in there to keep that shape to make that parchment paper be tight to the bottom right here in the sides. Now if you want to, you can buy the beeswax molds. They're much nicer. You can get them from the bee supply warehouses. I don't have any of those. I really don't do this often enough to justify buying any. So I'm just kind of using what I've got. But we're going to use this. Uh, we're going to use this setup right here. I think it'll work good. this into one of these leg holes here. The reason that I'm going to do that instead of instead of out here is this is stretched pretty tight which means these holes right here are a little bit um, a little bit bigger and we're not going to get as good a filtration out of this right here as we are out of this. What we'll do is we'll pour the wax into these two leg holes and uh, then we'll take this off. We're not going to squeeze the pantyhose once we get it off because that'll squeeze out a lot of those particulates that are trapped in the pantyhose.
So guys, here it is. All we've got to do now is pour it up into our mold. You can see over here we've got a little bit of trash that actually appears to be water mixed with some a uh, little bit of debris. I'm not going to worry about that because it's separate and I think maybe it'll separate once we get it poured up into the mold anyway. So uh, uh, let's get this poured up and see what we've got. So guys, this is what we're left with. This is some of the prettiest yellow beeswax I think I've ever seen. Look at that. Didn't have quite enough room in my big mold, so I got, I put some in this mold as well. Left all our contaminants in this little pool right here. Thankfully it all sunk to the bottom. Hopefully it'll stay that way. I'm not sure, it looks kind of dirty. But there it is, we just gotta wait for it to dry now. Guys, if you've been working outside all this time, it might be valuable to move it all to the inside of the house now. Just get a place where you're not going to mess up the table, put something down, newspaper, trash bag, whatever. Try to keep this wax off of stuff. But it's usually better to move into the house or into a really clean spot uh, at this point, just so you don't contaminate this wax. Because if you go to making candles with dirty wax, it, nobody's going to buy it. It's going to be pretty gross. But what I did, I, I was kind of running out of time. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I came in and I put this wax in the refrigerator and that hardened it up a little bit faster. Uh, let's, um, let's get it apart. Let's get it out of this container and see what we've got. So that actually worked a lot better than I, than I thought it would. Let's get a close-up of that. That's really pretty. So I used this mold uh, simply because I ran out of space in that big mold that I was using. Let's see what these did. Oof, there's, those, there's those contaminants that we were worried about. So here's the one that had the contaminants in it. It was actually water and trash. We can just, I, I rinsed all the water off, but we can just scrape that dirt off and it should be fine. So guys, that's all I've got. I really appreciate y'all watching. I am very pleased with what we got out of that wax. That was just one batch of beeswax. The other one is currently out there hardening and I'll be able to pour it up. I poured it probably next week. I'm not going to have time this week, but uh, that's it. I'm very pleased with this wax that we got. The color could not be more beautiful. I wish that y'all could smell it. It's got a, it's got like a sweet um, kind of a kind of a vague hint of honey aroma to it, and uh, it's just it's just beautiful. It's just really nice stuff, and it's just a wonder to me that bees can make such useful things. Um, <laughs> being little winged insects they can do so many useful things for us it's, it's just tremendous to be able to see our creator's hand in all of this but i appreciate y'all watching i hope that y'all enjoyed the video and i will see y'all next time
So if you remember, I mentioned earlier about making fire starter out of some of this stuff. This right here is the cocoons and the large particulates that we filtered out during the wax screening process uh, during our initial melt when we had the water and the wax boiling together and then we ran it through the screen. This is the stuff we dumped out on the newspaper. Supposedly this stuff makes a pretty good fire starter and I can see how it would because it's just, you know, that trash from the, from the hive infused with wax. Uh, this seems a little bit wet like it's got moisture in it. But let's light this and see how it does. Alright, so it's pretty clear I did something wrong there. I can see how it would probably work. It's got a lot of wax in it, but I think you probably have to let it dry first because there's also a lot of water in it and it's just not going to burn with, uh, with all that water in it. So let it dry and I think you'll have a pretty good fire starter.